So we've been talking a lot about culture and um, diversity and inclusion. And at Chobani, some remarkable number of nationalities are represented in your company. At 19, is 19. it? Yeah. It's amazing. So talk about how you create a sense of, of us at the company. I mean, as human beings, we're, we're simply wired. We see people who are different from us. We just, you know, say, like, it's kind of us and them. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you make that real? Uh, yeah, it, the real is, is you know, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, it, it's, uh, being real is extremely important for a Chobani, for me and a Chobani. Whatever we do, we want to make sure that it's actually we are being real. Uh, we're not pretending to be something. Right. Uh, we're not implementing something that we learned from the books or we saw from the movies or whatever. Right. Uh, so the, the, the realism is very much in the center of Chobani. So whatever the struggles that we do, behaviors. Uh, so, so from day one, I try to make Chobani a safe home for everybody. So you, you come to Chobani, and, and that was me. I was uncomfortable outside. And can I create something that I am extremely comfortable? So the, the lucky part was the factory. Factory was this old place. It was closed. Um, it was 90 years of life circle was ended. Hmm. And here I was there with five factory workers. And so we were all you know, in, in there. There was nothing fancy about it. And, and we started making home by painting the wall in the first day. Oh, that's great. So that was our home. We wanted to fix it. That's nice. And that motion became extremely powerful. So whoever came tried to fix this place. And, and we said by fixing this place, we're going to fix ourselves and we're going to fix this community together. And, and because it became this beautiful, nice place, uh, everyone came. They brought the positive side of it in there. Hmm. And, and magically it became like, here you don't have to pretend. Whoever you are, it's okay. And, and I made the first rule, I said, it's okay to say I don't know, period, it's okay. But the number one we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we learn about it. And it's not a rocket science, we will learn about it. Uh, and then later on, I've always said there are two types of people in the world. It's people who work for Chobani and it's people who doesn't work for Chobani. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any other way of discriminating people. I don't know <laughs> color, religion, right. or any other things. And this became very real. Uh, and, and you would are, repeat that to everybody. Yeah, we, we repeat, and, and I mean it. Then I see someone from uh, on the street that works at Chobani, I feel like I saw my tribe member. You know, it, it's such like a sense of tribe. And when you leave the tribe, you still have that you know, trace, but it's right. not the same anymore. Right. Uh, and I would say, when we ask people, last year uh, about how you feel about Chobani, how you feel being here. Number one thing came out is I am absolutely home at Chobani. I can be myself. <coughs> and in the business sense, when you don't have to pretend, you're saving 50% of the time. Because most of the time, what we're trying to do is we're trying to fit. We're trying to you know, be accepted. We're trying to be better than what people think or look better or this and that. But if you come, come to a place where when you left home with your children and with your you know, partner and you come to a new place where you can be completely the same, you don't have to change, uh, magic start happening in that place. Yeah. People are complicated, though. And as the company has grown, you've hired hundreds of refugees. How yep. many? You know, there's got to be some people who disagree sort of politically. I mean, yeah. there's been flare-ups, right? Yeah. And yeah, the, yeah. how do you address them? I mean, do you sort of take care of it right away to make sure it doesn't... I, th I think if you ask people at Chobani, because we have, in upstate New York, we have about 300 of them. And if you go to Idaho, there's as much. So one is New York, one is Idaho. You know, two different landscapes when it comes to political opinions. Uh, and in the factory, we did not have one single incident all these years, not even one. And, and, and magically, when you have a family day, we do it in the summertime that we all go and we bring our kids and fa you know, family members to the family day. So it's not only the people who work in the place that you know, integrate it, but also the, 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 the family. It, it is the most beautiful thing to see. Now, there is no teaching at all happens at Chobani. We don't say, 
oh, you have to do this, you have to do this, these are the people from these places. You... We let them interact. But what happened is we talk about product that we make. We talk, about, we talk about why we make it. We talk about how we make it. We talk about what we did here, what we did there. Uh, for me, is every single person working in the company is extremely important. And because I started with a factory with five people, I give as much information to the people who works on the line, on the filler, than the one in the office that does the marketing or the, the finance. So the, everybody is, is extremely powerful in their own way, but they do simple, simple things. But they always have the big picture of the company, where we're going, what are the challenges, right. what have we done right. Um, and, you know, when I go to plant, I hug you know, my colleague from upstate New York, uh, you know, rides bike or whatever, you know, the, the, the hobby that he has, or I hug my refugee colleague that, who might be from, you know, wherever he comes from. Right. Um, but I don't know who they vote for. I don't know what their view on when it comes to, you know, how should country should be look like, and, and that's not my job. But what I can say is if you ask every single Chobani employees in both factories in the offices, they will say, we have to open our arms. We have to let people to be part of the community. We have to let them to build their life and their future with us together. There's room for all of us. Yeah. That, that's for sure. Now, you personally have faced some attacks on social media, and there were calls for boycotts because mm -hmm. of your policy and decision to hire refugees. And can you share with the audience what it was like to, to live through that? Yeah, New York Times broke that, that news. I mean, that was happening for a while in the beginning. Like, you know, it, 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 sometimes it makes you sad, but at the same time, I, I got so many letters and emails and messages from the people. Uh, I mean it when I say it, is if it didn't make a difference on somebody's life, if it didn't make a difference on community's life, or, or some sort of elevation hasn't happened in some way what I'm doing, then I have no reason to do what I'm doing. It just takes the 90% of the reasons out. If it was money, that part was gone long, long time ago. Right. So you have to find a way to keep you going every single day. And this has been my thing, is if I can change somebody's life by making yogurt every day, and not me, let them do it. Let them build their life themselves. Because giving is something, in my opinion, is extremely delicate uh, topic, is when you give, sometimes you break things. But when you create an environment for someone to build it themselves, that's, that's basically magical. Uh, I don't mind. It's OK. It's, it's perf perfectly fine for people to disagree. I blame on some of the wrong writings that happen in there. Uh, and they were wrong, and they took that writings out. But when they come and see, right. when they hear the stories that where people come from, what kind of experience they have been through. And, and when they came to this safe, generous place, and with this job, how they built their life, and their kids went to school, and they bought home. Uh, and I can tell you stories and stories of you know, people at Chobani. Uh, it, it's tough to not to get overwhelmed by it. Yeah. 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 So I'm just curious about <coughs> you as a person. I mean, you, you clearly have an idea sort of business is more than just about making yogurt, yeah. it's more than just about making money. I mean, where does that come from? When you were a kid, parents' influence, experiences, wh what is driving you and, and where did that come from? Um, I'm a nomad. I, uh, I grew up, I'm Kurdish, I grew up in eastern part of Turkey. We had a beautiful childhood, simple. Uh, you know, shepherds go out to mountains, make cheese and yogurt, come back to town. Uh, I never thought I would get involved with business later on in my life simply because I really hated the, the money, the business, what it represented um, growing up. And I thought that was completely out from me. The magic of this country is sometimes it makes you, dis dis you know, discover things that you didn't know you had it. Um, and you know, when I started doing this, I, I had discovered so much about myself that I had no idea. Like what? Like, I didn't know that I could, you know, I had opinions on branding, I had opinions on leading people, I had right. 
I had opinions on taking risk. I had opinions of I could get people to believe something extremely crazy. Like, you know, I go back and I say, I'm going to buy this old factory. I'm going to hire the first five people. Guys, believe me, we're going to make this work. And the people right. will say, Kraft just closed this. <laughs> and you have no money. How are you going to you know, get this done? I, I, I had no idea I had those things. And I give it to this country, the magic of this country. I really do. But I also wanted to do something that I didn't want to become something that I hated. So I didn't know what it was, but every day is a decision. Every day, every second, every minute, you make decisions. You interact with people. You interact with customers, consumers, your people. And that is the one that builds the culture. Uh, because you don't, you write in the walls and you say, this is what I'm going to follow and right. yeah. this is how we're going to be. It's those stories are really lives within the door, you know, walls. And then you, you end up starting to get an idea how this is going to become. Right. Uh, the first five years of Chobani is one of the most amazing times of Chobani. From starting of 2008, end of 2007 to 2012, we started with five people. We became a billion in sales. We had 2,000 people. And we had no sense from outside as an investor. And that five years, the world did not know about us. I was in upstate, I was in the factory every single day, 90% of the time. I ate pizza for lunch and, and I slept in the factory floor with people all the time. But when they are not watching, when nobody is watching, when nobody is paying attention, and what you do every single day there is the one that builds the culture. And that's the one that I was myself and I wanted to do the way that I want, I thought, you know, my, my son would be proud of me or I could sleep and if I have the image of my mother, I think about it, look, I've done, you know, well with your opinion too. Um, but I realized that all these things that I knew, I thought that the business people had to follow to be profitable and successful was not right. You could actually be a nomad or a shepherd background and continue to put those things into the work and you could do something that never been done before. And, and then you start questioning of, okay, maybe everything that they say out there or stereotype of the business or the CEOs that I have seen growing up is not the right way. There is a different way of doing it. And then I start becoming more, how should I say, sophisticated about it. Right. You know, before it was just act without thinking. Later on, I said, okay, the way that I see manufacturing, the way that I see workers, factory workers in the management, the way that I see the wealth distribution, the way that I see, you know, diversity, you know, in the workplace and all that stuff is actually in the naturally embodied ourselves and also the business. And if you are, if you are thinking that way, one after another one, it just leads you to be, you know, what you want to do. Uh, and we look back and we say, the craziest time that we went through in the first five years, I had so many urgent matters that I had, to, I had to think about. Do I have enough production? Do I have enough money? Do I have enough milk? Do I have enough people? Do I have enough, you know, resources and all that stuff? When you are dealing with those things, you sometimes forget what you do, how you do, you know, when it comes to the way of culture. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that I did not miss that opportunity that I spent as much time on, that, on those areas than I did on the other areas. And again, same thing when it happened that we had a crisis in Twin Falls in the plant where business kind of got into a really tough position. I went to the plant for three months. And also in the toughest time, what I did is I just wanted to be with my people in the factory mm -hmm. without yelling, without blaming, uh, without doing anything, just shoulder to shoulder work and come out of it. And, and between the tough times and the good times, when you don't take your feet off from the ground and you stay there, and then later on you can come to places like this and you know that there's 2,000 people, they care as much as you do. Right. And that's the most powerful thing. But it takes time to build it. It, it, it takes sacrifices to build it. Yeah. yeah. And so much of a, you know, actions speak louder than words, of course, and you being there on the factory floor yeah. and with the people, that's probably the most powerful signal. But in terms of things that you say, you know, I, I love that 
line about there's only two kinds of people in the world, those who work for, I mean, that's a brilliant ninja move to yeah. create a sense of, you know, we're all in this together. Are, are there other things that, that you find yourself repeating, the powerful signals to send what matters to you in terms of culture? Yeah, I mean, um, there are a few things that I cannot have any, we ha I have not seen much of it, but I do not have any uh, patience to. That I, there are a few times I get angry about things, is disrespect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody can get angry at me, I mean, that's fine, because we, we are passionate people, we talk about it, but personally disrespect somebody, it, it really, that person cannot live at Chobani, it's just the system throws, throws it out. Right. Um, I do not have things that I say, we must do this, we must do this, we must do this, we must do this. I don't have those things. People try to come up, analyzing, to write things. But one thing that I always do is, I hate silos. You know, um, I interact with line, line uh, operator or with my CFO. Mm -hmm. um, I am extremely micro in and always have a bigger picture. I think about that all the time. Uh, one thing that I say to people all the time, you must have a bigger picture. The, 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 the bird eye view, we all must have. Not stay there, we right. have to do everything right. uh, in, in our leader. One, two is, um, you know, what we make product is yogurt. Uh, never take your eyes from that, that product. In the end, we exist because we make this. So I personally, myself, and every single one of us, we go crazy about yogurt. We go crazy about every single cup. I mean, we, uh, we have no other, other work. This is it. And 90% of my conversation with my colleagues is about what we do, what we make. Yeah. And, and that lives in everywhere that not only me or my innovation team or a marketing team or everyone, but everyone in the, in the company is an expert on, on products. So innovation, like making things better, and that's what happened at Chobani. We just got better and better and better and better right. is in heart and soul of what we do every single day. Right. Yeah. We're gonna go to audience questions in one second, but I'm gonna ask one more. To get the culture right, I mean, people always say this, you know, hiring is 80% of it, right? You get the right people, and the yeah. culture just builds on itself. So how do you hire? What's your best interview question? What are you looking for? I, 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 I don't see people this, I don't see people like good people or bad people or. Well, there are Chobani people and not Chobani. Yeah, but that's. <laughs> just calling. No, before they come in. Yeah, okay. That, that's right, after. Right, right. What we say is if there's a fit, if there's a fit, then, then things happen. So, you know, you might be amazing what you do, but but it just doesn't fit at Chobani. So there is this eye that we look at it is personally fit. And then experience really comes later on. And it became a little bit important, you know, in this stage because we need some, you know, some experiences and all that stuff. Uh, so the, the first is the